Dr. Bo, welcome. Uh, Dr. Bo is, the, is an uh, emergency room doctor here uh, in Grand Forks at Altru. Um, uh, Dr. Bo, you're on the front lines of this. Yeah. Uh, uh, I just I would ask you just to share a few thoughts first. That that sounds great, and and uh, this is a perfect opportunity for me to say that I do forgive you for putting me be, in, behind the first lady of the state of North Dakota and the governor, as well as a triple gold medalist, and then. Of course, uh, I am getting to take the stage. You're forgiven because this is such an awesome Thank event. You. Thank you. It's really such All an awesome these. event. Uh, and I do really appreciate the opportunity to speak uh, on behalf of uh, physicians and healthcare of North Dakota for what we're seeing, what we see for people uh, on the front lines and, and what our patients are experiencing. The first thing I want to caution people about is that, again, this is a challenge. This is a call to arms. This is not a victory celebration. As the governor pointed out, we're actually losing the battle. So I've been at emergency medicine for the last 20 years. I can remember the first uh, uh, slogan when I was first starting medicine was, you have a right to have your pain treated. And I remember seeing many people coming into the office and say, there it says right there, you know, I, I need my medication. And sometimes that was true. But I, I also saw how the Purdue Pharmacy kind of abused that, and I saw how it became very easy to get narcotics, and how we, did, we as a healthcare community didn't really help the problem. In fact, we contributed to the problem. And we're trying to get a handle on that now, and it's really, really important, as the numbers show. Um, I'm gonna say this, alcoholism, of course, is cultural in our community, and we have to change that. I've grown up in little tiny towns, and I'm sure almost all of you have been in many of those same small towns where there's one church and one bar. Right? So you go to church and then you go to the bar. That's what you do. And that is a, a danger. It's a danger. And, and we want to, to address that. We want to talk about it. Uh, this is what I hear from my patients. They say that addiction is miserable. They say it's a miserable thing. They're unhappy. They're hurt. They do terrible things to themselves and their family. I have seen patients stab themselves in the abdomen for pain medicine. I have seen patients burn themselves with the hot oil in order to get pain medicine. I have seen, I have seen someone grab off the shelf or off the wall hand sanitizer and guzzle it because they knew there was alcohol in there because they wanted to drink real bad. I have seen that. And if you hear, if you spend any time in an emergency department, you don't have to spend too many days before you find one of those kinds of stories. So I'm going to tell you, I hear from my patients that they're miserable. That's one thing. The second thing I hear from my patients is that they're alone. There's 9 billion people in this world, right? 9 billion. But addiction is a very lonely disease. You know, when I look around the room here, I can see a lot of head shaking because you know it, right? When you're addicted, you're alone. You drive your family away. You drive your friends away. People don't want to deal with all the problems that you're creating, the legal problems, all of the social problems, the behavior problems. It's a very lonely disease. And so what do I tell them? I tell them that they are not alone, that there's help. And this is where the ex exciting enthusiasm for me is really coming from. It's, it's, it's great to see that there is such an overwhelming amount of support that's starting to develop for people that are suffering because this has been a very lonely disease. And so right now, now is the time to get help. That's what, the third thing I tell them. I, every visit, now is the time. Do you want help? What can we do? And um, I think it's really important to understand that everybody here is at risk. And I think having followed the governor and the governor's wife, who told an amazing story, having followed a triple gold medalist who has also got an amazing story, I think it's pretty easy to realize that we're all at risk. And we all probably have family and friends that are also suffering. So we do know that. So what can we do? Well, with regards to the opiate epi epidemic and all the, the fentanyl that we're seeing in, uh, across the spectrum in all kinds of preparations and drugs and the way they target our youth, I think it would be very important for everyone to have Narcan in their home. You should have it in your home. You should have it on the shelf. You can put it in your car. You should read the package instructions because there are some storage important, some important storage data on here. You don't want to get it overheated, and of course in North Dakota that's not usually a problem. <laughs> but there is some there is some recommendations for for storage that's important. 
And um, I'm going to say this, that um, I think it's a, our opportunity to really uh, make a difference, to give someone another day, another chance, another chance at recovery. So let's watch the video. Narcan nasal spray is not a substitute for emergency medical care. As with any drug, you need to be aware of important safety information concerning its use. Please see indications and important safety information at the end of this video. Also, please see accompanying full prescribing information in the use of this product. Narcan nasal spray is an emergency treatment for a known or suspected opioid overdose. The appropriate use of Narcan nasal spray can help you save a life. Narcan nasal spray is not a substitute for emergency medical care. As with any drug, you need to be aware of important safety information concerning its use. If you encounter someone who is unresponsive and you suspect an overdose, first shake their shoulders and shout their name. Kevin. Ask if he or she is okay. Hey, can you hear me? Check for signs of an overdose, unresponsive to touch or voice. Breathing is slow, uneven, or has stopped. Snoring, gasping, or gurgling sounds. Fingernails or lips are blue or purple. Administer Narcan nasal spray as quickly as possible if someone is unresponsive and an opioid overdose is suspected, even when in doubt, because prolonged respiratory depression may result in damage to the central nervous system or even death. Lay the person on their back to receive a dose of Narcan nasal spray. Remove Narcan nasal spray from the box. Peel back the tab with the circle to open it. Remove and review the printed quick start guide inside the package. Hold the Narcan nasal spray with your thumb on the bottom of the plunger and your first and middle fingers on either side of the nozzle. Do not press the plunger to test or prime the device. If you do, you will waste all or part of the dose of medication. Tilt the person's head back and provide support under the neck with your hand. Gently insert the tip of the nozzle into one nostril until your fingers on either side of the nozzle are against the person's nose. Press the plunger firmly to give the full dose of Narcan nasal spray. Remove the device from the nostril after giving the dose. After you have given this medication, seek emergency help right away. Narcan nasal spray is not a substitute for emergency medical care. I'm with somebody who stopped breathing. I, I think they've had an overdose. Move the person on their side after giving Narcan nasal spray. If possible, put their hands under their head and bend their upper leg forward. This helps prevent the person from rolling onto their stomach. This is known as the recovery position. Continue to watch the person closely. If they do not wake up or respond to your voice or touch, or if they do not seem to be breathing normally within two to three minutes, use a new Narcan nasal spray to give an additional dose in the other nostril. Acute opiate withdrawal symptoms may occur from use of Narcan nasal spray in patients who are opioid dependent. Symptoms include body aches, diarrhea, increased heart rate or tachycardia, fever, runny nose, sneezing, goosebumps, also known as piloerection, sweating, yawning, nausea or vomiting, nervousness, restlessness or irritability, shivering or trembling, abdominal cramps, weakness and increased blood pressure. When the emergency is over, put the Narcan nasal spray back in its box and throw it away in a place that is away from the reach of children. In addition to watching this video, please read the quick start guide that comes with Narcan nasal spray before using it. Talk to a healthcare professional if you have any questions about how to administer Narcan nasal spray. Please read the indications and important safety information that follows. Store Narcan nasal spray at room temperature between 59 to 77 degrees Fahrenheit, 15 to 25 degrees centigrade. Do not freeze Narcan nasal spray. Keep Narcan nasal spray in the box until ready to use. Protect from light. Replace Narcan nasal spray before the expiration date on the box. Keep Narcan nasal spray and all medicines out of the reach of children. So, Dr. Bo, pretty simple. Quick recap on Narcan for it. Exactly. It, this is easy to use. I really want to reiterate that. Don't be scared of it. It's easy to use. It's no, in fact, it's more difficult, I think, to take a pill. This is easy to use. So you identify the problem. You administer the medication. More ideal if you can put the patient or the person in suffering in a sniffing type position 
because it, it, allows, it allows better access, put the person into the recovery position to try and give them the opportunity to not roll onto their stomach, and then call for help. Fantastic. Dr. Bo, thank you for being here today. Round of applause for Dr. Bo, everybody.